Hello everyone! As you may have already noticed, based on our previous upload, Ed and I went on vacation to a nice warm tropical climate because it's cold up here in the north. And we filmed several videos while we were on this trip. The Belize Zoo from our last upload was one of those, and today will be another one, and the next two videos will also be about the amazing reptiles that we saw during our adventures. After that, it'll go back to normal, talking about the reptiles that we keep personally. Anyway, I just kind of wanted to let you know what was going on there. Before we start today's video, I want to thank our sponsor, which is Audible. Audible is an electronic service that provides audiobooks. Listening to audiobooks, like the ones from Audible, has actually played a pretty big part in my day-to-day -day life. You see, when I'm traveling with my reptile shows and I'm going from one program to the next, I'm often in my car for sometimes hours at a time. But after I discovered audiobooks, my drives have gone substantially quicker because I get so engrossed in the story and before I know it, I'm at my next location. So if you do a lot of driving for a living or if you just want something to listen to while you're running errands or riding the bus, I highly recommend looking into audiobooks. At the moment, I am rereading my favorite book series, which is the Aragon series. Being a reptile lover, books about dragons is right up my alley, and it's a great book for really all ages. It would be kind of a big book for middle schoolers if you're watching this, but the adventure that this book takes you on is totally worth the time to go through the entire series. You can actually get Aragon for free, or any other book that you want, it doesn't matter. You can have one free book on me if you go to audible.com slash snake discovery or if you text snake discovery to 500 500 you can download Aragon for free and keep it forever and you can also get a 30-day free trial with audible and even if you don't continue using audible after the 30-day trial you can still keep that free book if you don't want to read Aragon you can choose a different book for free it could be a $13 book or it could be a $120 book it doesn't matter the first book is free on me Anyway, I'm going to go back to reading or listening to Aragon. And uh, again, if you want to try it out, just go to audible.com slash snake discovery or text snake discovery to 500 500 to get started. But without further ado, enjoy today's video. She let out another roar and gouged the earth with her claws, tearing the frozen ground. Hey everyone, Ed and I are on the historic island of Cozumel, which is home to the world's fastest running lizard, the spiny tailed iguana. <laughs> Knowing that these amazing creatures were near where we were visiting, Ed and I rented a scooter <laughs> and drove to some Mayan ruins to see these iguanas up close. This is the black spiny-tailed iguana, which has a scientific name of Tinosaurus similis. Tinos meaning um, comb, which refers to the comb-like spikes down their back and on their tail, and saurus meaning lizard in Latin. So together, Tinosaurus, the comb-like lizard. The locals also call them the chicken in the trees because apparently iguanas taste like chicken, although this specific species is protected. This one here is a male, and you can tell because he's got these large jowls under his chin. Males also develop an orange color around the head and the throat during breeding season. And the one behind me here is a female, you can tell because she lacks those jowls. However, you have to wait until the iguana is mature, and then you can see if they have jowls present or not. Juveniles won't have jowls whether they're male or female, so it's hard to sex them when they're very young. Babies, by the way, are bright green, and they lose that green coloration when they turn one year old. So they don't look like this, this grayish color with those black bands their entire life. The Tinosaurus similis is the largest species in the genus Tinosaurus, and it grows to about three feet for females and four feet for males, which is a decent size for an iguana. They don't get quite as large as our green iguanas that we sometimes see in the United States do, but they're still a decent size. This young male is uh, showing off their pretty well-known threat display of bobbing his head to show his dominance over us. He's just trying to act a little intimidating, which I think is adorable. And if you look at his tail, you'll actually see that orange part is actually a regrown portion of his tail. So at some point, he was either attacked by a predator or maybe harassed by a human and broke that off, but it regrew. It just will never look like it originally did before it broke. The diet of the black spiny-tailed iguana will change throughout its life. They kind of remind me of bearded dragons because juveniles, which head out, hatch out at about four inches or so, will eat primarily insects. They are insectivores. And as they grow, they change from protein to more of a vegetable diet and they become herbivores, eating a lot of flowers and leaves, other plants that they may find, with the occasional mammal when they're able to catch it. 
And as you can see, they are excellent climbers. This one scurried right up the tree. And like I was saying before, this is the world's fastest species of lizard. They clock in at about 21 and a half miles per hour, which is faster than any other lizard that lives on planet Earth. These lizards will often eat leaves that are high in salt, so they have special salt sacks that will collect the salt, and once they fill up, they sneeze it out through their nose. This is what a lot of iguana owners call snulting. Look at her giving us the stink eye. As you can imagine, they use their tails as one of their primary sources of defense. They will lash out their tail at you if they feel threatened, but they are not afraid to use their mouth end either. And since they have mouths that are meant to tear bites off of leaves, they can tear flesh pretty easily too. Uh, the only scars Ed and I have from our reptiles are from previous iguanas we've owned or fostered. This is from a green iguana, so not the spiny tail, but iguanas in general can have very serious bites. So if you see one in the wild, it's best just to leave it be. Plus they're gonna be too fast for you to catch anyway. The black spiny-tailed iguana prefers hot, rocky environments, which is why Mayan ruins are a perfect environment for them. There's ruins all over this park, by the way. We really like the park, but we did focus on the uh, lizards because we're reptile people. But if you want to check out Mayan ruins and spiny-tailed iguanas and see a lot of garter snakes all in the same day, we highly recommend checking out this park right here. Although, I don't know how to pronounce it, so I'm just going to put it in the caption, and I'll put a link to it in the description below. Thanks for joining us on learning about the world's fastest lizard, the black spiny-tailed iguana, and we'll see you next week. He'll let you. I'm spook him. I bet he'll let you. Hey, dude. I don't want to yell. Don't mind me. Okay. He didn't even budge. No, he didn't. Huh. Juvenile. Are you okay? Yeah. Whoop. Look what I just caught, you guys. We've been seeing many garter snakes slithering across the paths, but they've been too fast for us to catch until I found this one at the base of a tree and managed to grab it before it took off. He is feisty and I smell like musk and I'll probably smell like musk for the rest of the day. But as you can see, even wild garter snakes as, <laughs> as quick and wild as they are, oh, there we go, trying to bite me again. Um, are, they usually calm down after a little bit, and even if they bite you, garter snakes are not venomous, so he's not going to be able to do anything. Beautiful, beautiful snake here, though. They have nice orange coloration by their lips. Did you see that? I saw that. They also have some blue on their sides. Yeah, blue on the sides. And even though he was trying to bite me, he, like, wasn't even breaking the skin, so we're fine here. Here we go. Cozumel garter snake. Oh, well. Bite, Quit. bite, bite. Really? This is where we caught the garter snake, and whenever you're herping at home and finding snakes and lizards, it's very, very important to make sure you release them right where you found them, because they have their home territories. As big or small as they might be, they uh, definitely know where they want to go, and they recognize certain areas. So we're going to set him back. That must be his home. Oh, oh no. and he's coming back out. Not very bright. Well, that was the hole he wanted. Nope. Nope. <laughs> there we go. Do you see what I see, guys? If you look close, you'll see a lizard that has the exact same resemblance of a garter snake. It's like the lizard version of a garter because it has the same colors, the same stripes. What a cute little guy. His tail is actually about as long as his body, if not longer. Unfortunately, I don't know what species it is because I'm not too familiar with the lizards down here. <laughs> if I were to guess, I'd probably say it's some sort of basilisk since it has the same head shape as like the green basilisk, um, but I don't know for sure. When I'm editing this video, I'll figure out what he is and put the name right here. Whoa! Look at the spots on him! Yeah. That's a gorgeous anole! So what are these called, Emily? Uh -huh. <laughs> so on this tree behind me is an anole. It's not an anole like a lot of people think. It's a anole. Call it the right thing. It's beautiful though. 